Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim, my co-host. Grandma Gail. So we just were going shopping. We interrupted our shopping spree to come record. Good day in the life of Kim and Gail. Yeah, it was a good day. And the outfits that some of the people down in Soho were wearing were so off the chart. I don't know where they go. It almost looks like a um, a pre-Halloween masquerade day uh, down there. And then we came back up to the Upper East Side and everybody Everybody looks so boring that I sort of got to feel that I really sorry I didn't look closer to the ones downtown because they were certainly much more fun. So it's a it's good to have a mix of classic and correct modern like this podcast. Yeah, well, this podcast is definitely a mix. That's for sure. We're getting two very different opinions. So uh, what depressed me the other day was Kim. I must say I went into a very very high price store on Madison Avenue, and I looked at the clothes and I was expecting to see something really glamorous and pretty. And what they had were cat. Cashmere sweatpants and yeah. cashmere sweaters to go with the cashmere sweatpants. I said to the sales lady, I, I got to get out of this. Well, sweat people clothes. live in that, but I know, but you I'm can't tired wear that of really it. out for dinner. Obviously, well, I think you can if you're sitting outside and it's yeah, cold. Maybe. I mean, that's the problem. You put on a pretty scarf, but not to like a bar. Like if I was going to a oh, bar, no. well, like, not in a dating scene, you wouldn't wear this. right. I mean, this, but I certainly I would wear that if I lived, uh, you know, if I was going out with uh, Poppy up here because right. it's just cold. Cozy, nice. Just cozy, pretty, a little, mm-hmm. you know, a little chicer than than it um, than a sweatpants. I hope we didn't lose every boy with this intro. <laughs> Hi uh, guys, <laughs> thanks for thanks for sticking with us. Okay, let's not talk about fashion now. <laughs> Except that we have to talk about fashion because we're going to interview somebody who's in that field. Yes, her name is Brooke Hill. You know. Influencer is a buzzword now that really has a negative connotation. Nobody wants another influencer telling them, hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is what you should buy. Everyone is sick of that. They want real people to like entertain them. So I think we're kind of, and Brooke was very aware of that and she, her brand, her personal brand is great. So she kind of talked us through her mindset with a lot of those decisions. And and I think everyone's going to really enjoy her. She was, de- she's delightful. We are joined by Brooke Hill. We love her Instagram. So we're so excited for this conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first ever podcast. Oh, really? that's so exciting. You join the club. I never heard a podcast before I'm doing this. <laughs> and so for our listeners who don't know, you're an influencer really by every sense of the word. You show people the way you live from lifestyle to home, to beauty, to fashion, uh, to travel. First of all, do you like the term influencer? I know some people, I mean, do you prefer content creator, blogger? Like, do you go by one or the other? Does grandma Gail know what an influencer is? I do now. I did not. I did not know it eight months ago, but I definitely know now. I know so many things that I didn't know. I know about swiping and about all these other DMing or whatever. So I do know what an influencer is, and I've seen. Well, now you know there's grand influencers, which are like grandma influencers. I guess that oh could, that could God. be you. I could. It could be me. I doubt it, but I, it could be me. I mean, you tell me I'm influencing people on TikTok. I can't even believe it. I mean, uh- this is amazing. What was the question? Um, <laughs> you could you could lose it with us. Trust me. Just, just if you if you it. like the term influencer, and if that's like how would you would describe yourself, I know you have like a whole vast experience in media. If you want to talk about your journey to how you created your blog, also. Oh God! I, so I always joke that I think the term influencer. You might as well use the term hooker. I mean, it's that bad. Only fan. Really. Like, in that realm of just horrible and mm. socially speaking like nobody likes really to hear that you're an influencer sure. I, don't, I don't think it has a great kind of like connotation um and for me it happened you know after I got a law degree and worked as a reporter and a producer in New York so it really was like oh my god look at the shift between like what I yeah. say to dinner publicly versus like, you know, meaning a year ago versus what I say now. But the Mm -hmm. fact of the matter is I perceive this space as being kind of like the wild west and there's a huge opportunity to create a personal brand and to monetize it in a way that, I mean, just candidly, I wouldn't be doing financially speaking what I'm doing right now, even if I were a partner at a white collar law firm. 
Mm. I don't think your parents are that happy. What happened to all the money they spent for law school? <laughs> I, I don't think they think I work. I don't know what they think. They, they, well, clearly uh, you do. And you yeah. have a huge following. Um, you know, it is an enormous amount of work. And I, and I, you know, to be totally um, just transparent about it, I fully understand why it has like such a, a negative rap. I mean, of course I do. Um, it's not like lost upon me, but I think the opportunity that exists is actually second to none. And I think if somebody did somebody something just maybe slightly smarter or different in the space, it would it would have a totally different kind of rep, you know? Mm. So I'm looking to grow and expand in different ways. And that's what keeps me fulfilled when it comes to quote unquote influencing. Totally. How do you know as an influencer or a content creator when I guess you could consider yourself like successful or cause I, it is the mar- market is a little bit saturated right now. Everyone kind of wants to do it. Um, let's say you're putting your stuff out there at what marker would you say, is it a certain amount of followers? Is it certain amount of like community engagement? I, mean, I guess technically speaking, it would depend on how you look at it. For me, when I started my Instagram, I wasn't trying to monetize it. I definitely wasn't trying to become an influencer but I would leave every morning for work on the West side across town. And I just would have whoever was like passing me by or the doorman at the time, or, you know, if I was getting in a taxi, the cab driver, like take a shot of my outfit. And that's how I accumulated a following of women who were also sort of like in their twenties at the time, let's say, and kind of interested in like, whatever I was doing as a journalist or I was dating at the time or how I would piece together an outfit for a certain mm-hmm. amount of money. And so that's kind of like how I accrued a following. And I, I've i always utilized that as kind of like my line of demarcation. I have a really organic following. So even during the time of the algorithm being wonky on Instagram and stuff, for me, it's like, but my engagement is still pretty good because these are women who have been tapped into my life and I, or my social media and I for probably like five, six years now. And that I'm grateful for. And I, I think is a blessing that's rewarding, you know, because yeah. it is for women like us. Totally. I love that you had the doorman take the picture of you. <laughs> like that's real dedication. Totally. I mean, it, it wasn't, um, that's the thing. It like, it wasn't even dedication. It was just sort of like an off the cuff, very simple thing to do. Organic. I think it wasn't, it was organic before that was like a buzzword even. Mm. And so I think it just like took off in a way because I wasn't thinking about it too much, which is something I'm very guilty of doing. I overthink everything in life, you know, specifically my work. And so I kind of miss those days in a lot of ways. And sometimes I think about reverting to that, even like having something else separately and just kind of documenting it in the way that I used to do. I think there's still something really to be said for that. So do you get designers to give you things that you that they think you might be, you know, might be your look? Or do you go out after, you, you know, these unknown young designers that have no format and, and you yourself develop their style along with yours? I mean, how does it really work? That Partnerships way? and collaboration. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not somebody who does, like if I, when people do unboxings and stuff, personally- Never speak- actually described that to my grandma before. Do you mind just explaining to her well, kind I think of what we that need is. to tell our public because a lot of the people who listen to us are over 65. <laughs> so they have no <laughs> idea what unboxing is except opening up a sax box. It kind of is that. Essentially but. what it is. <laughs> oh, all right. Then I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you get a box or something from typically, I mean, for me, at least it, it would be from like a PR company. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of influencers do is sort of like unbox you know, cause you'll get something at your front door. It's like right. a package of goodies and then you'll unbox on camera and you'll say what designer or what brand sent you X, Y, and Z within the box. Right. I don't really do that. I mean, I don't really collaborate. I buy a lot of my own stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, right. During fashion week and whatnot, I sometimes will collaborate just because I can't afford to buy a new outfit every day. Right. Um, but I like for a lot of the things to be my own. I don't, I mean, I've done unboxings before on Instagram, on stories and stuff, but it's not, I don't do it nearly to the extent that pretty much every other influencer does. Mm-hmm. It's like, if I like something, I'll buy it. If I can't buy it, I don't, but um, I'm not somebody that's like funneling things in and out via all these PR companies. I just don't. Okay. Yeah. So you tell a story through your own, through your own perhaps hat or pocket personal or purse style or whatever and- your personal thing is in your own closet. 
Yeah, I mean, I think Bill Cunningham was saying that about Fashion Week and kind of like why New York Fashion Week has lost its luster. And he's like, it's a bunch of people wearing clothes with tags on that they can't afford right. or whatever it is. You know what I mean? But because right. you do go crazy, not mm-hmm. not that it's like really a monetary thing per se, but you do go crazy and want to um, like have a new look every day. And so there's a temptation to borrow, borrow, borrow. And But, you know, I either uh, save up or I, I don't, you know, I don't showcase it really. How do you think your personal style has evolved since you grew up really until now? I think grandma Gail will like this, but I really try and take a timeless approach to personal style. I really do. So if you were to look at my wardrobe, it is sort of very like Upper East Side grandma. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's still good. And it's still good. I mean, (laughs) the the old little black dress. Here we go again. The black little dress and the little cute bag is still the right way to go. Yeah, I mean, even like for a date or something, if I, I, I take an approach of like accidentally sexy. So there's nothing that's super trendy or super out there for a specific mm-hmm. occasion. It's, it's very kind of like pared down and timeless. At least that's what I try to go for. So much so that I hope in 30 years, I could easily want to have the exact same items. Truly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. I feel like I always try to go for pieces that I'll wear once or maybe never put on. And then you're like, this is not your stuff. Like this isn't what looks good on it's not you. your look. It's not yeah. your look. You need to be classic. <laughs> you need to be classic. Well, see, now I'm dressing like her too. Well, we're now, we're getting, now we're really getting scary. <laughs> I mean, this is the sad thing that we're picking out each other's clothes now. This is, this is very bad. And you could share a closet. Well, we can share shoes because we're the same. Yeah, we share too. bags. <laughs> yeah yeah we we like the same do we yeah yes, we do maybe. yeah we like the same well i maybe i steal your bags i don't know if you stole my well, i'm not stealing yours but you're stealing mine definitely <laughs> yeah. i'm just giving them yeah that's the best of both worlds i think exactly brooke do you have any advice or tips for how to take like the perfect instagram photo i know now that kind of looks different than maybe it would have been like a while ago now i feel like people are doing like photo dumps and being trying to be a little bit more natural with their pictures but what advice trying would you get? to be natural right is- exactly. no you're absolutely right i'm big on light that's something that i've learned sort of um the hard way where a lot of times if you want to capture a certain backdrop, typically that means that you're going to be backlit, which just mm-hmm. for me is never flattering. And I think for many people just isn't the most flattering. So I've kind of learned to stare at the sun. I just like to be very, very well lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, if I don't have the right light, I, I almost don't even shoot nowadays. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. I feel like it is harder than people think to get a good picture I actually one like we don't take pictures that off well we tried one day for our Instagram because well, when we first started the podcast I was like we need to have some pictures together oh, right. for our Instagram Jeffy like, dressing up in 45 I, I, we outfits. literally bought a duffel bag of outfits <laughs> I felt like I mean I feel like I'm sure you do this sometimes if you have like shoots and things like you bring different options and we were sitting around and we yeah, were like you're dragging a 78 year old woman around the place changing in different locations it was so we silly behind columns and I was changing my shirt I said Kimberly this is so ridiculous but it was fun I I have learned a lot from you I'm I'm absolutely enamored by your youth oh and I think it's I think and you are terrific book I I think the whole what what has become terrific is that older people can now really listen to you and hear what you're saying and somewhat try to understand it. And I think you do make it understandable. And, and I think it's great. It keeps everybody in a circle, a circle of life. And it's very important. This is getting deep now. Oh, it is deep. It is deep. Thank you. So we like to ask all of our guests about their relationship that they had with their grandma. Were you close with your grandmother or um, grandfather? Either grandfather? One. Let's not be sexist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, both. Um, my grandfather kind of was, I grew up a lot um, in their house, actually, mm-hmm. both of my grandparents, but my grandfather just passed away last summer. Yeah, I'm so. Sorry. Oh, no, thanks. So, I mean, he was 93 and oh, he had a very okay. long life and drank every day, I think. <laughs> had a good time. So, so he's okay. Yeah. My grandmother passed away about seven years ago, but I was very close with her, especially growing up, mm-hmm. you know, um, because like I said, I grew up in their house. So both yeah. of them really in different ways though. Yeah. Did they ever give you any relationship advice? My grandfather, I think, just blocked it out altogether <laughs> that I may ever, you know, even be interested in a guy. Right. Um, my grandmother, though, I used to, I used to hear her say two things, uh, be with somebody who's self-made, you know, that was very important to her. Don't be with like a trust fund, whomever. Right. 
who is very into like make your own way and whatever that looks like it looks like um and just don't tolerate anything teetering on the brink of what would be categorized as like unhealthy today mm -hmm. so bad behavior. Flag, just get out of there right you mm -hmm. know um and so those were the two things if, if any that she mentioned yeah good advice I mean, dating now is obviously completely different than it was when my grandma was younger or even when our parents uh, were younger. Is there anything that you feel like we've lost today that you would wish we kind of had, like either whether it's courtship or chivalry or things like that? All of the above. Yeah. I, mean, I was just going to say definitely the courting phase. I I do think I take maybe slightly more of a conventional approach to dating than when I talk to girlfriends or things like that, I, mm -hmm. I like to be courted. I like sort of like traditional roles in that sense. And I like to take things kind of slowly. Um, I do wish there was a little bit more of an emphasis nowadays on like an actual relationship as opposed to just the swiping and right. the hookup culture. Right. Um, but that's just me. I mean, there's no specific reason for that. I just, I think it's nice and it's just the way I like to move. You know. I think it's more than you, more people than you know feel the same way. I, it's just I, I really do believe that. I think it's just pressure today from so many different uh, circles that cause the, especially women, to mm -hmm. feel that they have to do these uh, hookups. Well, and, we did an episode right. on this where yeah. we read like a psychiatry article. I forgot what it was now, but it was pretty much the message of like, especially with college students, you either buy in or you're not like dating at all because it's very hard to like you know be in the world now and not play the game right. it's very it's a it's a sad it's very difficult growing up today mm -hmm. yeah i mean and my grandfather would say that too even towards the end of his life he would just talk about he wasn't one to do that but the differences and you know mm -hmm. and it, i do think it's a lot harder and i think you know maybe not more so for women than for men but i can only speak as a woman and and i do think it's very difficult and i see what girlfriends go through and it's not a walk in the park mm -hmm. no we want to play a game with you Grandma Gail's green and red flag quiz. Um, so Which Kimmy springs on me every week. <laughs> <laughs> They're a surprise to both of you. So we will go through these and you two can tell me if you think it's a red flag or if it's okay. 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 When the guy is on multiple dating apps. Red flag for me. <laughs> Brooke. <laughs> and I'm not even dating. And it would be a red flag. I think technically if you're on one dating app, I mean, it means you're on all of them, right? Oh, is that like, true? I agree. I mean, I <laughs> was always on multiple dating apps. I, I think if you're on one, what, like, why would it be a bad sign to be on all of them? It I don't just, know why. You're, you're either on, on them or you're not. Like, okay. Right, right. If you're on them, you already have exposure to like presumably more than one woman. So I think it's okay if you're on them. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Okay. He breaks plans once. So let's say on the first date, he's like, couldn't get there because of work. But then after that, he's pretty timely with dates. Like, do you still remember the first time or do you give him a pass? I don't know. Brooke, you answer that. I don't know. <laughs> I would have, if he broke the first date, I would never give him a second date. I, but that's, that's not true. I, you, you made me give one person like seven chances. Oh, no, that because it wasn't a good date. I said, give him a no, chance. No, no, no. Because he broke, broke a date? Yep. I remember oh, that. I, I, I can't. I blocked it out of my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I did that, slap my hand. That was very bad. You should have dropped him immediately. I think generally it's a red flag. It's not great. Like there's yeah. nothing great about it. Now yeah, it's there are medical thing. emergencies and things, so I'm not going to. I mean, unilaterally <laughs> decay. But exactly, there are only so many times somebody could die. <laughs> grandfather died seven times this right week. exactly <laughs> I mean I think bar I think generally speaking it's a red flag yeah yeah okay um if he's aggressive on text messaging before you meet meaning like constantly hey how's your day uh before you've even gone on a date yet well I ask Brooke this because I don't we never texted so I have no idea I think all this texting is a waste of time he should if he likes you and you've texted a little bit just pick up the phone and ask you out so okay, so me, let's say he called you 10 times a day before you even went on the date I, I think it's a bit much yeah yeah I think that I just went through this with a girlfriend of mine who had like a serial texter reach out and he was nice and a doctor but he would reach out just 24 7 right I think um it's a red flag yeah. Okay. Good. I think so too. Okay. Last one. If he likes 10 of your photos on Instagram at once, including photos from like two years ago, 
I don't know what he's well, especially doing. Brooke, I feel like you, I mean, you have 600,000 plus followers. Like that probably happens a lot where people are like liking old photos of yours. Like, I, I feel like I only have like 10 photos. Like what's really that old, you know what I mean? But I feel like have the presence of mind though, not to go back past like the one year mark because it's it's teetering on the brink of creepy so yeah, yeah. everyone does it I'm not mm-hmm. saying that like I myself wouldn't do it I'm just saying don't actively sit and like to actively like is like mm, it's a bit cringy yeah I agree Brooke thank you so so much this was so fun chatting with you you're terrific so and keep fun. it up now this I'm gonna fun. follow you <laughs> oh my god doesn't have I'm Instagram honored. but excuse my grandma oh my. will follow you <laughs> Can you tell our listeners how they can find you? Sure. Yeah. So my Instagram is my first, middle, and last name. So Brooke, Carrie, like Carrie Bradshaw, Hill with one L. Hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Brooke. Such a sweet, positive person. And really quite magnificent looking. So it really was nice. I know. In the middle of the interview, we were just like, you're really pretty. (laughs) But she's also a lawyer. Like, she's beautiful and smart, which is sick. Which is great. Yeah. Which is great. Um, So, 50s movie of the week. What do you think, Kim, this week? I think Uh, we have to do something that had beautiful clothes in it. I was thinking maybe American in Paris. Because I remember Mm -hmm. the clothes were so beautiful. What do you think of that? Yeah. An American in Paris, 1951 musical romance uh gene kelly my favorite and it's also set against paris scenes which are beautiful so it's a delightful uh watch and i hope everybody enjoys it another great episode of excuse my grandma follow us on instagram and tiktok at excuse my grandma please give us five stars wherever you're listening we want to get to the top charts you guys we want you all to come with us okay so we will see you next week bye